Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering viral and fungal infections found in the pediatric patient. You absolutely are responsible for knowing the differences of these viral and fungal infections, what they look like, and what the uh, management for um, these, these disorders are. So before we get started, guys, as always, I'm gonna ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video. So if you can please press that thumbs up so you don't forget, do it now, you're gonna love the video. Like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website at Nexus Nursing Institute. Com. So let's get started, guys. We're going to start with the viral infection. And the first one we're going to start with is Veruca. This is warts, okay? Warts are, let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Every time I think I made it big enough, as soon as I start, I realize it needs to be bigger. So warts, guys, these are of a viral nature. And one thing you know about viruses, guys, can they be cured? No, uh, they can be treated, right? They can be managed, but it's going to come and it's going to go and we're going to treat the symptoms. So you guys know what warts are. Some important comments I want to bring to your um, attention. They tend to disappear. They tend to disappear spontaneously. And what happens is the parents will bring the child in because they're concerning. They don't want to look at that. They they're afraid. But you have to just teach the parents that you know this is of a viral nature and auto inoculable. What does that mean? That means that they can transfer that wart to other parts of their body. So you have to teach the parents about that. Herpes simplex virus, vesicles. This is group um, group burning and itching of ves vesicles on inflammatory base. Now I underlined the word vesicles is because not all the time, but most of the time, when you see that description of vesicle, think viral. Okay, I want you to think viral. That's why I underlined it for you. Important things to know about the herpes simplex um, virus management, avoidance of secondary infections. So what happens is, guys. Um, this is very painful. It's, uh, very itchy. And so what happens is patient may touch or scratch that area and scratching that area, you decrease the integrity of your first line of defense, which is your skin, right? And that's a perfect medium for bacteria or pathogens to come in. And now that can cause a secondary bacterial infection from the original viral infection. So that's what they're talking about here. Look what else? Oral antiviral such as a cyclovir for virus, okay, for initial infection. Make sure you're familiar with and you recognize the cyclovir because usually that's uh, the medication that is the drug of choice that when you get a test question, they'll ask you about when it comes to the herpes simplex. Valocyclovir, that's Valtrax, that's an oral antiviral. It's used for episodic treatment of recurrent genital herpes. So guys, there's two types of your herpes simplex. You have your type one, type two. Type one is above the belt. We tend to see this around the oral area. We tend to see those lesions. And type two tends to be below the belt. We tend to see it in the genital area. So with the valocyclovir, that's our Valtrex, that is um, used for recurrent. That means it's come back, recurrent genital herpes. Comments, look at this, may be fatal in children with depressed immunity. What kind of children we talk about? Children who are organ transplant recipients and they're on high dose steroids so their bodies don't reject the transplant, transplant right? Uh, children with HIV, AIDS, children who are on chemo or radiation, anything that would, would make uh, that child immunocompromised. Next, varicella zoster virus. When you see varicella, I want you to think of chicken pox. All right, here we go. There's a ch chicken pox, very painful. So we expect to give analgesics for pain. A cyclovir, that V-I-R, think of virus, viral infection, cyclovir or valocyclovir. Look at this, prevention, a preventative vaccines available for persons 50 years or older. Why? What are we thinking of shingles? That's exactly why. This is what they're talking about. Let's keep going. Uh, for the varicella, Post-herpatic pain does not occur in children. It occurs in adults, and that's why I wrote here shingles. Chicken pox may follow exposure, isolate the affected child from other children in the hospital or school because this is very contagious, and it's going to be contagious until those lesions have crusted over, and may occur in children with depressed immunity. Uh, excuse me, in depressed immunity. So what does that tell us? Also, guys, whenever something can occur in a child with depressed immunity, that also lets us know we're not going to give them that live vaccine, right? Right, let's keep going. 
molluscum contagiosum, flesh colored papules around one to 20. Cases in well children resolve spontaneously on its own in about a month, a year and a half, 18 months. It's spread by skin-to-skin -skin contact, including auto-inoculation. Again, guys, they can uh, spread it to other parts of their own body. Let's keep going. Now let's talk about fungal infections. You guys have to know the difference in these fungal infections. We have our tinea capitis, caporis, curis, pedis, and then we have uh, candiasis. So let's start with capitis. When you see tinea capitis, think of the cap, right? You put a cap, what? On your head. So that is the fungal infection that the patient has in their scalp, okay? Lesions in scalp, oral management, Griseofulvin, ketoconazole, selenium sulfide shampoos. Um, with the selenium sulfide shampoo, the patient's going to use it twice a week. They can use um, ketoconazole that's orally or grisio. Here's something important for you guys to know about griseofulvin. You see how it says grisio? Think of grease. The grease is what activates that medication. So you have to teach the patient to give the patient that medication with greasy foods. Okay? Comments. Person to person transmission animal to person transmission. Next, tinea corporis. This is on the body, fungal infection on the body. They'll get oral grisio and usually of animal origin. And when they say animal, usually they talk about pets. Next, tinea cruris. That's what's known as jock itch. Skin response is similar to skin uh, tinea corporis, and we'll, we tend to see this in the curl folds, right? May involve the scrotum in the males, very itchy. So just think about that athlete that just finished playing basketball or soccer or football, and they got all that sweat just in the crease of the genital areas, and it's just sitting there, and you know they didn't bathe yet, and it happens a couple times. Well, remember, fung fungus, they love wet dark, moist environments is a perfect medium uh, for it to grow. We often see this in uh, adolescents and adults. We hardly ever see this in children. Tinea pedis, pedis, that's the foot. So we tend to see this between the toes and on the plantar surface of the feet. Last, candiasis. Did I say that? Candy, candidiasis. You guys see that word. You guys know what I'm talking about. Fungal infection. I can't pronounce, but you guys see the word. So um, again, this is a fungal infection and it loves to grow in dark, wet, moist environments, okay? In neonates, thrush, oral nystatin. Nystatin, that's our key, okay? Candiasis, we either tend to see this in the mouth and that's the thrush, or we tend to see this in the diaper area that's also known as diaper dermatitis, right? And They'll get nice statin. They'll either get nice statin orally uh, in the mouth for the thrush, or they can get in cream for the diaper area. Common form of diaper dermatitis. And that's it. I actually, guys, I shouldn't say that's it because I'm going to go more into detail about uh, the fungal and the viral infections. However, th this is these are the most important things that you guys need to know. If you have a test coming up, everything that you saw that I, I highlighted, I underlined, or I put a star next to, make sure you know it. That's the end of this video, guys. Very short and sweet. Let me know what you thought about the video. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover more of or more extensively. And please don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you, thank you so much for watching, and you guys will catch me on the next video.